We'll look at 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 7. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 7. I'm going to do a dichotomy. I'm going to teach two important things. I notice these two things are the number one things why people fall into sin. The number one things why people get deceived into a lie. The number one thing why people don't serve the Lord. Two senses in the flesh, which is, I noticed, sight and feeling. These are the two things that I noticed with our world. That's why everyone falls away. For example, why do you get discouraged when suffering happens and you don't go to church anymore? Because it doesn't feel good. Why do you start to not believe that a God exists and you want to uh, go into the world? Because the world looks good. You see that, but you don't see God. Why do people uh, care more about worldly possessions and heavenly rewards? Because you can't see heaven. You only see the world. That's why I notice these are the two things people fall into, but you can't do that. You know what you need to replace this with? You need to replace these two things with this. It is extremely important because faith is believing in something that you can't see. Faith is serving God no matter how bad it feels. And when you basically blind these two senses and then start to serve God by I don't see it and I don't, I don't feel good about it, Oh, it doesn't feel right when I hear that. Well, when people hear the sermon, it doesn't feel good, right? They hear some teaching, maybe like mine, when I give some really big controversial teaching. What's the first impression of feeling? He's wrong. It just doesn't feel right. See that? That's the thing. Rather than what? Faith. And that faith has to be implanted upon, obviously, it's not empty evidence. The Word of God. Now let's look at these verses, 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 7. For we walk by faith, not by what? Sight. How many of you are walking by sight? No wonder you're messing up in sin. No wonder you're backsliding your Christian life. No wonder you think the world is more appealing than the Lord. No wonder when suffering happens, you tend to get out. See that? Now look at Hebrews 11. Hebrews 11. Hebrews chapter 11. Think about it. Do you know how these Old Testament saints and people throughout the Bible were able to become victorious people at the end? Because they had to believe by faith. By faith without seeing some things. And because of that, the Lord rewarded them richly at the end. If you want to be a hero, a great saint that God will reward, you have to do the same thing. Faith, just complete faith, without seeing the result at the end. He Hebrews 11, verse 1. I mean, this is a famous chapter that so many people overlook. Hebrews 11, 1. Now, faith is the substance. See that? It's not empty. It has substance. Of things hoped for. The evidence. See that? It's not empty. It has evidence. Of what? Things not seen. Oh, you know, I don't think the heavenly reward is worth it. Oh, I don't think God's chastisement is that bad. Oh, see, no, there is evidence. There is evidence for that. And you're attacking evidence, God's evidence. You know what? Your evidence is seeing, see? But God's evidence is not seeing. That's your problem. Now, look what happened when these people followed in faith without seeing. Look at Hebrews chapter 11. And we're going to look at the end. Now, before you say that you have it bad or you have an excuse to not walk by faith and quit on God, look at verse 36. And others had trial of cruel mockings and scourgings, yea, moreover, of bonds and imprisonment. They were stoned, they were sawn asunder, were tempted, were slain with the sword. They wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, tormented. Did any of you go through that? But look at this last part. Of whom the world was not worthy. See that? The world that you see is not even worthy of that. 
That's why the world rejects him. That's why God didn't give, bless him with the world. Why? Because it's unworthy by faith. Faith is gaining what? They wandered in deserts and in mountains and in dens and caves of the earth. And these all having a good report through faith received not the promise. Look at that. See, you don't see that promise happening in your life. But you're going through faith because why? Verse 40. God having provided somewhat better thing for us that they without us should not be made perfect. Boom. Boom, boom. You see that? So it's in the future. So your flesh, it doesn't feel good. But when you go by faith at Hebrews chapter 11 and 2 Corinthians chapter 5, you got to understand this. Faith is not just believing without seeing and going for it. It also takes what? Time. Patience. No one, no one likes this. Your evidence is that is you all drive a car. You all take a plane to go to some place far. You're not going to take a boat. You're not going to drive to some country far away. You know why? Because it takes time, time, time. I'm impatient. I am impatient. When your internet goes slow with this video, you all don't like that. You know why? Impatience. We're made to be that way. Technology is made to be fast, 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 fast. You get it right on the button with the iPhone and the, with the internet and all that. See that? Faith is patience. When you lack that, I promise you this, you will fall to this side. This side is the flesh. This side is the world. This side is the devil. I promise you this, you will fall prey onto this side. And Satan will keep using, attacking these two senses. The flesh will keep feeling these two things. The world will tempt you with these two things, so much things. And that's why you keep sticking to that drug because it feels good. That's why you keep looking at the things you shouldn't be looking at online because it looks good. You see that? That's the problem with people. Now, this side is the spirit, though. And when the spirit walks by faith, it's based on the word of God. Look at Romans chapter 10. Why, is, why did you say there is evidence, Pastor? Give me evidence of what you say when you cannot see it. The evidence is the word of God. <clears throat> Look at Romans chapter 10, verse 17. Look, if the Bible says that you'll be rewarded more if you serve him, if you sacrifice for Jesus, God will richly bless you. If God says that uh, living for him is greater than the pleasures of sin, if God said all those things, are you going to believe him or are you going to doubt him? If God says that your suffering will turn out to be something better for you, are you going to doubt him? Why do you always say, why God? Why did this happen? See that? You're not, you're, you're going by this, always this, not the word of God. Romans 10, 17. So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the what? Word of God. Now it's going to be up to you what you're going to do. If you don't have that, that's why you're going to fall apart and the devil will make heyday with you. We're going to close it right here. Let's look at this last verse. Ephesians 6, and we'll call it a night. Ephesians chapter 6. I mean, God told you your defensive weapons and then your offensive weapons. Your faith, your defense and offense goes hand in hand, you got to understand. So this is something important. Your defense and your offense go hand in hand together. And because people don't do this, that's why you, this, these three things will always get you with these two things, all right? Oh, excuse me. So faith is your defense, and the Word of God is your offense. And they go hand in hand. It's the sword. And the faith is your shield. And, I, and I t I'll tell you what, when the world starts to allure you with the sights and the flesh wants to feel that way and the devil starts sparking these two senses, you'll always shield yourself and attack, shield yourself and attack. And when you keep blocking what faith makes you block what sight and feeling does. And then the word of God will start to attack these things and kill these senses. Amen. And you need to do that, bless God. Now look at Ephesians 6. Verse 16, above all, taking the shield of faith, right? 
Why? Because faith is a shield wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the what? Fiery darts of the wicked. Verse 17, and take the helmet of salvation and the what? Sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. I told you so. These things go hand in hand and people lack this. Because you lack this combination together. See, what is your faith in? Is it what the preacher is preaching all the time with some powerful illustration that will give you some kind of tear-jerking thing? That's not good. I'm not there 24-7 for you. But the word of God is, is it not? And your faith better be planted on this word and not on Gene Kim. Because if your faith is implanted in this video, once it's uploaded, you're in trouble. Your faith got to be implanted on that word of God because there are some things that I said that I did not even cover or may have missed something important. And if you keep putting your faith on that word of God, I promise you this, you'll do fine. You'll do fine and every time sight and feeling comes in, it'll just bounce off because of your faith on that word of God. And because of your faith on that word of God, it will attack at the same time. This is literally a tank. It shields you from attacks and it also is an explosive weapon that attacks the enemy. This is your faith in the word of God. Faith in the word of God is your tank. That's the reason why I have continued to pastor this church, did not quit the ministry, did not compromise, yield into pressure, ever doubted myself, oh, I wonder if I'm right or wrong. No, because I had this faith on the word of God. I don't care if the whole world turns against me even. See that? Because why? My faith is on the word of God. And because it's on that, I don't care what other people say. And that's why the Lord had me stick to all this time. And I did not quit yet.